This will be video number 11 in the Six Cycle Oddball series, and today we're going to make the piston, and that's the print. Uh, these plans are in the book from Philip Ducos, and it's uh, for sale by uh, Village Press. And in the back of uh, Home Shop Machinist, you can find them. I have people that ask me if, where the plans are, and I, it's in the first video. I actually show the book. So if you go to the first video, you can see it. So this piston is a little bit over three quarters of an inch. And even if it was three quarters of an inch, you should start with material that's larger. What I have is one inch 6061 aluminum, and I'm using that. Uh, 7075 aluminum is is a little stronger, a little better, but 6061 is, is about perfect for most pistons. So we're going to turn that down to the outside dimension first, and then we're going to do the bottom of the piston first. So let me face that off. Now I'm going to, I'm going to measure down here and set up my stop so that I'm not cutting a lot of extra material. It's got to be an inch tall. So I got an inch out of there, I got an inch and a quarter, so I'm going to go down here, about an inch. Right about there, and I'll set up my stop so I don't run into the chuck. And turn that down to the outside dimension. Don't want to go under. Okay, there's still plenty to go. I'm going to switch the mic now, and see, now we're only... Four, four over. Now I'm one, one thousandth. Before I cut all the way across there, I'm gonna measure it. So I'm still two over. Now I'm gonna take a spring cut because I'm very close to the dimension. You'll see this will still cut some. Now see, that'll fall through there, but there's absolutely no play. And that's the way it should be. So now the next thing we're going to do is the bottom of the piston. And uh, that is in 300 thousandths. The diameter is here somewhere. Uh, 748. Seven, basically 750. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drill to the bottom of the piston with a, a 1 8 drill and then open that up to 1 quarter inch all the way to the bottom. And then I'm going to bore this part next. Now this is the quarter inch drill. Uh, bore the rest of the way out. Start with a small boring bar. So this bore goes in 5 16 of an inch, which is 312. Ten to go. thing we got to do is cut the ring lands. The print calls for ring lands that are a sixteenth inch wide. That's good. So we have a sixteenth inch cutting tool here and uh, they're a sixteenth inch part. So that would mean one, two, three, four, they're a quarter inch down. So that means they're three quarters of an inch from the bottom up. The positioning of the rings isn't really all that fussy. Just three quarters of an inch here. Just double check my math. So they're showing the ring land to be uh, 40 thousandths deep, but you want about five thousandths behind it and they're showing the ring to be 40 thousandths. So I'm not sure. So I'm going to go actually 45 thousandths deep, which will give five thousandths behind the ring. Just check, checking my dimension here again. That should be one inch high. I'm going to mark that and saw it off in the saw. I'm 
And there's the piston. Now when I put that back in the vise, I mean in the, the lathe chuck, I'm gonna smooth off the head. But first we're gonna do the features in here that the wrist pin goes so through. In order to do this, we're gonna put this in the collet block and put this in the vise in the milling machine. And then we're gonna mill the slot in there for the end of the connecting rod. We gotta put a quarter inch uh, end mill in here. Okay, I just centered that with the, uh, the end mill because this isn't really fussy. Right, almost to the skirt, and I'm going to set the stop and go to the other side. It's just not touching. And set up this stop. So now I've got to come down and just touch that, which is right there. And zero this, drive 25 at a time. See, I have to back in the chips out of there because you let too many chips get loaded up in there, it'll screw up the cut. So I've been vacuuming them out about every two cuts. So there's the slot. Next thing we got to do is protrude this out enough to put the cross hole in it. And I want to make sure that I do it this way and it's got to be 90 degrees to that slot and the right depth in. So uh, now I'm going to face off the head of the piston and make it the right length. I measured this and it's nine thousandths over, which is just about right from what I see. So I'm going to just take that down. And if the piston was too long, as long as you measure the wrist pin hole from the top, it doesn't matter. It could be a quarter inch too long and it wouldn't matter in this engine. So that should be just about perfect now. I should probably take the, uh, the sharp edge off of here. So let's tape it a little bit. So now I'm going to put a little bluing on it to mark it. So the wrist pin is exactly in the middle of this. It's a half inch from both ends. So I'm just going to mark that. At 500 thousandths from the top. In order to get that 90 degrees, I'm going to put this in here and line that up by using a flat thing. You see that's, that's sitting on that flat. That looks pretty good. The next thing we got to do is line up on that. We got to center it this way and then line up on that line by eye. Boy, it's just about perfect anyway. A few thousandths off. And we'll put a spot drill on that. Okay, that's, that's calling for a 3 16th inch wrist pin with a reamed hole. So I'm going in there with a number 15 drill, which is a little under 3 16th. And then I'm going to ream it. There it is. This is the complete piston. We'll have to take a few burrs off it, but that's it. I'm just taking off the burrs because the ring lands, uh, when I cut the ring lands, it left little burrs there. Make sure there's no burrs on it. And that should just drop right through that cylinder. So this, this is, fit in there just barely fits now you can push it through with no effort there it is now it's it's going from one end to the other and if you push this in with your palm you should be able to feel a little resistance when it compresses so if you try to push that in you cover the end up and push it in it'll give you a little bit of compression so that's the end of number 11 as far as the piston rings go, I have a whole video on piston rings. You can go back and refer to that. I don't want to run through that whole thing again because that's almost a whole video in itself. And uh, it shows you how to make the piston rings and heat treat them. And uh, they should pop right on there, no problem. In the next video, what we're going to do is the connecting rod to connect the piston to the crankshaft. 
Thank you very much for watching. If you liked what you saw, give us a thumbs up, please. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much.